And welcome back to Ship Shape. My name is Cole Hansen. I'm with Anoka County Ship. Now, some of our viewers have been asking us about how workplace wellness can influence places other than your traditional workplace. Uh, so I brought in some of our most valuable service organizations here in Anoka County to talk about the impact that worksite wellness has had on not only employees, but volunteers, paraprofessionals, and everybody in between. Uh, so before we get into anything, I just want to say thank you all for coming. We'll, we'll move around for introductions. Um, first, let's start with you, Steph. Um, hi, um, my name is Stephanie Lehman, and I am the executive director at ACBC Food Shelf. Um, I have worked in the hunger relief industry for about 12 years. I started in Mills on Wheels and uh, I have a long history working with volunteers. Um, we are a community food shelf, so we serve anybody in need, regardless of where they live. Uh, but predominantly 90% of people come to us are in Anoka County. Fantastic. Uh, next we'll go down here to Laura. All right, hi, uh, my name's Laura Seifert Hartling. I'm the Director of Special Services at Fridley Public Schools. I've been there for 10 years. Um, I've been in education for over 20 years now. Um, uh, right now, you know, what we've been working on um, with our schools is we've been really trying to support our paraeducators and our teachers to have comfortable spaces to be able to prepare food and meals for lunch and also to be able to find a split, um, spot to relax and um, just take that break so they can continue to serve students. That's some important work. And then last, we got Brooke over here at the end. Hi, I'm Brooke Jensen. I work for Achieve Services. I'm the development director and I've been there a little over two years. Um, I have a background working with people with disabilities, both at a group home and as a PCA or personal care assistant. And I have a background also working in fundraising, so it's a perfect fit. I really like Achieve. The work that we do is awesome in our community. So we serve adults with disabilities, primarily in Anoka County, and we provide employment opportunities for them out in the community with various business partners like Medtronic, Holiday Station Stores, Colburn's. Uh, we also have employment in-house where they do different assembly, uh, production work and they get paid for that and then we also have uh, life enrichment skills programming for like we volunteer with Meals on Wheels and different uh, organizations creative writing workshops and various things so um, it's a good organization it's fantastic thank you all so let's uh, let's open to something to give some folks some some context as to what's going on in, in Anoka County so when it comes to workplace wellness right there's a lot of um, traditional kind of big uh, picture things that places try to do but and you know, your, your organizations are based here. You're not running big national programs. You're, you're just here in the community. What, what does work, workplace wellness and, and well-being look for your organizations, your staff, your volunteers? Um, and let's, let's start with Brooke at the end and we'll make our way back. Sure, so we're really grateful for the Noka Ship Grant because they funded a garden for us. So it was really fun because we had uh, not only the equipment that we needed supplied to us, like, a, like shovels, hose, um, a non-crinkle garden hose, just all these different supplies. Um, we also had lumber given to us or funded so we could have a volunteer build a wheelchair accessible raised garden bed. So it's really awesome because the person who utilizes a wheelchair can go underneath um, their, roll their chair underneath and then water the plants and kind of tend to them. And so we grew tomatoes and cucumbers and peas and peppers, bell peppers, even some strawberries in a cantaloupe. And then at the end of the harvesting, we actually enjoyed pico de gallo with chips. Our participants had a really good time. So it was a wonderful opportunity to have participants out in nature, watering, enjoying the sunshine, and just seeing their hard work grow into awesome vegetables now, and, and promote healthy eating. Now I do have to ask, did you have too many tomatoes and squashes and zucchinis like everybody else I know who gardens and you oh, have to pass those out. We had a big bucket. It's awesome. I'll have to share a picture with you. It was just tons of tomatoes in this mm -hmm. huge, and the, but the, the participant smile is just ear to ear. So it was great. All right. Yeah. Well, last time we had, we did have somebody with their garden. We had uh, Susan Yee from the Rum River Arts Center. She brought some on, on, on set last time. Oh, so, well, you know, we'll, we'll watch out next season. Yeah. We'll let me know. that out. All right, Laura, what about, uh, what about over at Fridley Schools? Yeah, so one of the things that we wanted to do at Fridley Schools is we really wanted to create break spaces for our staff to have a spot to come in and be able to relax. So 
um, we partnered with Anoka County Ship and um, we worked with the U of M also to create some ideas for how we could build these calm spaces. Um, I remember when we first started the project, it's like when you walk into a caribou, sometimes you just kind of, your shoulders drop and you're like, okay, I'm in a mm -hmm. space and it's relaxing. We wanted to really get that feel for our team members um, who work in those spaces or who are um, take breaks in those spaces. And um, working with uh, the U of M, we got some ideas for some color schemes and some ideas for some different kind of art that's kind of calming and relaxing. Um, so we've worked actually with SHIP the last two years and it's been definitely a journey. We kind of had a phase one where we did some painting and got some different colors in the break spaces because schools are typically um, not always very colorful. And you, you all did the painting, like you were in your, yes. your coveralls and everything. We all did the painting, yes. Yeah. We worked with our um, custodial team and different team members and I was doing some painting also mm -hmm. um, to get all that painting completed. And then we kind of went to a phase two where we ordered some comfortable seating, um, plates, forks, cups so people, um, our team members could come in, um, microwaves and fridges, and then also not just have that comfortable space, but also be able to bring food um, from home or um, meals that they could prepare there and just have a space to hopefully take that 30 minutes to really relax um, and then be ready to go back and work with our students. That's huge, because you're the, I mean, we're all in Anoka County, but Fridley is the only one with like multiple locations, so yes, there's a yeah. lot to work to making sure everybody has what they need when they move from place to place. Absolutely, we have six locations that we focused on, um, so we really tried to work throughout the entire district. So we also have, um, Cole, like you mentioned, people move different places. Some of our staff members do travel. So our hope was to be able to build a break space that gives staff the experience, no matter what break space they're in, they kind of have that same feeling mm -hmm. um, of being able to kind of have a spot just to be yeah. calm and take a break. That's great. Yeah. And then Stephanie, so what, what what's going on at ACBC? Yeah, so at ACBC we have um, many different areas because we have our grocery, our free store, which we have volunteers working in that space. We have our backside, which would be, you know, food coming in where volunteers are sorting and um, stocking shelves. And we wanted to really make sure we were looking at all volunteers in different areas to address their um, their their wellness. So, on the backside, you know, are people having appropriate? You know, are they lifting appropriate? Are they using their mm -hmm. body in a way that's going to you know reduce injury and not add injury? Because well, uh, you you have a lot of older volunteers too. We do. Most of our volunteers are retired, so we want to keep them healthy. Um, we want to make sure they're, you know, they know how to do their mm -hmm. job uh, in the best way possible. And then we also have had opportunity to work with volunteers in our store, um, just uh, helping them understand the importance of nutrition and reading labels. And we did um, some work around that because we have lots of our uh, participants who come to us. They have challenging health concerns and they're shopping for food that they need, they need to be able to understand those labels and we need to understand how to help them do that. So, you know, really dissecting different areas of our organization to figure out how we can provide a better environment for our volunteers. Um, and then now we are also going to be doing um, a break room um, revamp, which we're really excited about because a lot of the work that volunteers do and staff it's really social so we want to make sure they have a space they can come in that's warm and inviting and also kind of decompresses some of the work we do because some of the work we do is very um it's you know a lot of um, moving parts and sometimes you know sad stories and a lot of food and we just want people to have an area where they can go and decompress and really you know just talk to each other and you know have some have some fun and socialize. Sure. I feel like the food shelf is a place where you're really, you know, you can put your back into it and you can put your heart into it. Too. Yes, 100%. You know, and you can, that, that can be pretty tiring. So it's, it's been fun watching the progress you all have made. Thank you. Um, so this one, this one's kind of a, a question for everybody and we can bounce this one around, but uh, you know, a lot of this worksite wellness, a lot of these questions come down to balancing, you know, equity and equality, right? Because you all have a mandate to serve our entire community. You know, somebody comes to, you know, Fridley Public Schools, if they live in Fridley, you know, they're going to need a place for their kid. They come to ACBC, they need something for their pantry. And if they have a loved one who needs some support throughout the day, they're, they're going to achieve, right? Um, but equity is a little bit different, right? We want to make sure that people are getting what they need to succeed and thrive regardless of where they are in the county. Um, what, has, what has that balance looked like for your organizations um, when you're looking at these questions of, you know, where do we invest our time or our resources for our staff, our volunteers, our paraprofessionals, you know, whoever is, is kind of putting on that, that shirt and helping you out throughout the day? 
I think with Fridley schools, um, like you said, we when students come and enroll with us, they are they're our students and they have different types of needs and we have to serve all those needs and sometimes that can be a challenge and we wanted to make sure we had a space for our staff members to be able to be able to take that break and then also then to come back and be able to serve our students because that's really important all our students have a right to be in school and we want them to be there and they're our kids and we want to make sure that our staff are ready and prepared to be able to serve our students and I'll chime in. We're since we serve adults with disabilities, equity and equality is very important to us, and making things accessible. So whether it's uh, making a raised garden bed that's accessible for people who utilize wheelchairs, or if it's helping with some adaptive equipment that makes it possible for them to do their work, we're very cognizant of that, and we're very um, fortunate to have a group of very good longtime staff members that have built good rapport and relationships with their participants. So they kind of have ideas and very innovative suggestions of, well, why don't we try this? Or how about we do this to make it more accessible? So that's, that's on the forefront for us in, in making sure that we can make everyone have a great experience, whether in their work or in, in the community. Sure. Uh, this is a really important question in our work. Um, just as theirs because we really want to make sure that when people come to us we're addressing um, we are addressing all their needs at where they need us to be so we first we work with um, every year we do a large survey to ask people you know what do they need from us but um, we made the decision uh, post COVID to go to open our boundaries to help everybody and that was really with the idea that um, there were uh, communities that needed more support than others mm -hmm. and how we could provide an environment inside that reflected that. So um, a couple years ago with SHIP funds, we were able to put new signage in our store, um, all multilingual, so that when families come in, they feel that um, this store speaks to their experience. Um, same thing with all of our instructions, all of our forms. I was going to say that's a part of the your super shelf now. Like that's uh, a part of that yes. program, right? Yep, super okay. shelf. And we've actually we were we're the only organization that's gone through two uh, two versions wow. with the idea to come back inside after COVID. So we were one of the first food shelves to move back inside because it was really important for people to be able to select their own foods. But also there was a large isolation piece um, that was not being addressed with people um, that we wanted to uh, help explore as well. So we uh, have opportunities for, um, you know, like I said, signage and, and those moments. And then we also have dedicated part of our budget to cultural uh, equity or culturally sp uh, specific food items. So that when we have people from um, you know, different populations coming in, we have food items available based on uh, those needs. And um, just creating, in addition to that, just more access in the community to kind of remove some of the stigma behind going to the food shelf. Um, that's allowed us to really partner with different communities. Uh, we have a, a family advocate that works in the community and just trying to uh, be at the food shelf that or a space that anybody feels welcome coming into and finding the food that they would want as well right wow that's yeah. that's a lot well here we're gonna sit on that and I hopefully you can sit on this too uh, we'll be right back and get back into some more of these questions with our, our wonderful panel here the impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies Because when people are fed, futures are nourished. Everyone deserves to live a full life. And with your help, together we can end hunger. Join the movement at feedingamerica.org slash act now. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. And so they need you to stand with them. And welcome back. Uh, now we're gonna be pivoting a little bit here to talk about balance. You know, one thing that I think all of us, especially you know, when we're kind of service oriented, right, we wanna give everything we can to the community. 
um, keeping that balance is, can, can be pretty challenging, especially um, when, when life hits you at home or there's, there's an extra thing you're asked to do at work, right? So when, for your volunteers and you know, especially, you know, let's, let's talk about some of those paraeducators with, with you, Laura. What does that work-life balance look like for your staff and your volunteers as they're engaging with your organization? Anybody can start, so. Um, I can start. Uh, so for us, it's really about just making sure that people feel like they can leave at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. that seems like a really simple thing, but it's reminding people that the work, the work doesn't stop when they leave, um, rather they're volunteers or staff. It's that we will always get the job done. We're, you know, we work together to make sure we are doing that and that when people leave, they should not think about us until the next time they come in, mm -hmm. unless they want to, you know, tap in some other way. But, you know, just making sure that people don't feel like they have to volunteer, that it that always that they want to. And in wanting to, it's not feeling like they have to. And it's making sure they understand the difference between, um, that, that there is a difference between those. And same thing with our staff. We just have, it's such a high burnout. So, um, you know, working in service industries like this. So we're really excited by opportunities to work with SHIP so that we can really address what that looks like for volunteers and staff and make sure that people feel that there are other options for them besides just nose to the grind, um, getting the job done. So making them feel valued in our work is really important. And this helps us really address that and brings them into the, the conversation and then uh, addresses what they need. Absolutely. I feel like I'm a recovering hyper responder when it mm -hmm. comes to my, my work inbox. So I, I feel you. Like I would love to be able to put my work down when I get home. And I think that's, that's really important for volunteers too. Um, you know, so, so Laura, with these paraeducators, it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different, right? Because they don't have a classroom mm -hmm. in the middle of the day they can, they can kind of retreat to like right. teachers do or maybe another staff lunch. So you know, what do those bar barriers or balances look, look like for those folks and, and anybody else who might be in the schools? Yeah, so we want to have a space where they can just kind of set their work down and, and just pause. I think that's really important, that work-life balance, even when you're at work, right? To be able to take that break and just to pause and calm and um, then be able to get back at it. Um, I think also just, you know, trying to, we try to talk to our staff about just modeling, you know, as, as even myself, just modeling that, you know, we can pause, we can take a break, we can, we can you know, tap out. Um, because we all need to do that because that's then we can be our best selves when we're working with our students and and even each other so i think that's really important and um, yeah our pair educators don't have a classroom so they can't um, have that space or they don't have that space throughout the day so the break spaces really have been the space and when we did our surveys that's really the population that was using the break space the most was our pair educator teams so um, wanted to get their input on you know what that could look like um, and really try to create that space for them to be able to you know, have a spot to be able to be and then get back and um, do that work. And then, yeah, I think what you said is really important too, being able to like leave work and try to balance that, right? Being able to put your computer away, your Chromebook away sure. and not have to worry about looking at it until the next day because the work's still going to be there and, um, and we can continue the next day with it. Yeah. Well, we're fortunate in that we're a day program for adults with disabilities, so naturally we're, we're open during the day business hours, so there's no weekend or night work working involved, which is kind of nice. Um, but we also have uh, very much a lot of flexibility in if people need to have a take time off, we have a kind of a culture where people will step up and help cover staff shifts, so that's really helpful. But then in regard to actual participants, I think the ship garden was really helpful because our participants are working too at Achieve. And so to have breaks where they can go and, and tend the garden or maybe take a creative writing workshop or do some art is also balanced for them as well. So it's important to, to take balance and, and do hobbies that you like and enjoy, but also leave work at work too. I think it's healthy. I think it's, you've all kind of alluded to this, but there's, there's no one right way to do work site wellness, it, it mm -hmm. sounds like, and I've definitely seen it, you know, there's, um, you know, it's, is, it, is it experiential? Do you want to feel a certain way in a space? Is it practical? Do you need certain things? But it, the important thing, it sounds like, is, is being mindful and being aware of it. So, so that's, I, I just want to say thank you to all of you for, for really focusing on the folks in, in Anoka. Now, the, while well, the show is called Ship Shape, 
um, I kind of want to flip it around because it's not actually just about ship. Ship is a vehicle to help you all do what you already want to do. Um, but since we have you all here, uh, what can Anoka County and what can our community do to help support you all and your organizations in, in giving the best back to Anoka County? Whoever wants to make the ask, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'll make the ask. All right. Um, so there's lots of ways to uh, support ACBC. Um, that can be volunteering, uh, it can be um, donating, donating time, donating money, donating food or hygiene products. It can be just telling a neighbor about the work that we do so that, you know, we're talking about it. We're talking about, you know, you know, food is plentiful in the community. There's, you know, there should, nobody mm -hmm. should be hungry. So, you know, tr removing the stigma is talking about it. So, um, but, you know, as far as uh, donating, you know, a dollar, for every dollar that's donated to us, we can buy $9.33 of wow. food. Yes, wow. especially fresh produce. Whoa, uh, we can get wonderful fresh produce, which is um, amazing. So uh, that, those are some ways to support our organization. Well, and there's always another holiday around the corner, I oh. feel like. The calendar just spins and spins. So We're giving out 600 frozen turkeys and all the fixings and fresh produce on November 17th to, yeah, 600 families, so. Wow. Fantastic, yep. yeah. So wow. that's, and I know you do a lot for all, all year long, so that's really exciting. Um, Laura, what can we do for the schools? Yeah, you know, I even, think- Even our day schools that aren't Fridley, right? How can, we, yeah. how can we connect to schools? You know, I think it's just important. Schools are community organizations and we serve students and we serve families. So becoming involved, signing up for different kinds of activities and participate, mm -hmm. um, making sure that if you're a parent, coming to conferences and just being aware and available. Um, we do have some um, parents who volunteer in our schools too. So that's always helpful to have those volunteers. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just being involved and staying connected with the schools is so important because if you don't have a child in the school, there's still great things that you can do within the school district um, yeah. for community events. So just staying involved and knowing that, you know, we're continuing to grow the future. So that's great. I know my wife is a proud library sorter at our at our daughter's yeah. school. So there's there's literally spots for everything yes. and everybody. Absolutely. So, um, and then and then, Brooke, how can we support Achieve? Yeah, so achieve, basically spread the word. I would share about our services because you never know if there's somebody in your neighborhood that could benefit from coming to achieve or touring and seeing if that would be a good fit in the future. Um, so we, yeah, we would encourage that. But then also we would love to have people work for us. We have always staff openings. And so if you know somebody who would love to make a, a huge impact in the lives of adults with disabilities, that would be awesome. Or if you own a business or know that you have openings and want some Achieve participants to work for your business, it could go either way. You could work for us, we could work for you. And then we also are a nonprofit, so donations are huge. Um, so anything, if you want it, or if you'd like a tour. Um, but lastly, we're very active on social media. So if you just want to see what we're up to, see some fun photos from the garden or, or from our outings or work, um, check us out on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook. Excellent. Right. I'm going to make a, a shout out too for your adaptive programming work. Anoka County Parks has been um, really focusing on on including more adaptive programming, and I think everybody should because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, it's not about doing things you know uh, separate or apart from each other. We want to do things together, but you know, we just we just need the tools to do it. So I'm really mm -hmm. excited about that. All that adaptive work you all offer. Yeah. Um, so that's you know, I'm I'm just <laughs> thank you all for coming. Like it's it's all really exciting to have you all here. Um, you know, our, our SHIP Worksite Wellness Program at Anoka County is, is, is just not, it, it can't work without folks like you. Uh, really investing that time, that energy into, into your folks, um, asking the hard questions, um, kind of sitting with the challenges that folks bring up, and trying to be a problem solver. You know, that's, that's really what this is all about. So again, just thank you all for the work you've done on behalf of your, your folks that, that work with you and volunteer with you, but also the rest of our community that, that benefits from the work that you provide. Um, but if you'd like to learn more about how to, help, how to make the Healthy Choice Easy Choice for your organization, or maybe introduce us to another, I'd recommend visiting goanokacounty.org and getting to know the SHIP website, SHIP team, and all the various resources we have available. Uh, but without further ado, I think we'll all say goodbye for now. And until next time, this is SHIP Shape, uh, trying to make the Healthy Choice Easy Choice for Anoka County. Thank you.